If anybody has them, instead of buying them, if we just like to borrow them, three of them. And then we need three black tablecloths, like eight foot tablecloths. <laughs> just the ones for a poster, like a regular poster. Just sometimes they make those collapsible easels. Yeah. If anybody's got any of those, let us know. Everybody hear that? Like for a tablecloth or stand up alone? Stand up alone. Okay. Everybody got that? And uh, let's see, what was the other one? Next week, is that next Sunday we'll do the after yeah. church? Yeah. 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 So next Sunday, immediately after church, we're going to move some stuff around in here. So some, uh, some of you strong, strong backed uh, <laughs> individuals <laughs> <laughs> hang around after church. We're just going to move some of this stuff around, getting ready for following Saturday night so yeah all right and you can still get a ticket to win this awesome guitar right here so drawing at the concert you don't have to be present twenty dollars a ticket it's like a fifteen hundred dollar guitar or more so there you go you still get a chance to get it Miss Kristen has tickets yep. all right and you gonna sign it Ben Skill signed. That's exactly right. Yep. In person. Elvis watched it. There's a couple people who said they would buy it, but they didn't win it. So I think it would be turned into money. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say uh, if I win, just turn around and do it again or sell it or auction it off or something. I thought, I don't think we have an auction. <laughs> All right. Well, you want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, do your five thousand. Let's see. I got one more to uh, you know our Hispanic buddies down the road. They sent me a deal. They're having uh, October fifteenth, eleven to two. They're having some kind of I don't know what it is fundraiser. Uh, and they're having chicken fajitas, rice, beans, all that stuff. So you know all the goods. All the goods. That's the fifteenth. Remind me, and I'll say something more about that later. Or share this little flyer they gave me. Uh, <coughs> anything else? I want to play a sheet on that. Uh, Alex uh, told me about that. They do a big uh, food ministry. They feed a lot of people in our community, and, and probably focus on the, the Latin community 
but he had so much food and he didn't have anywhere to store it. But freezers, he's got a bunch of freezers, but some of that stuff doesn't need to be frozen. So he's looking to get a, a big biz queen, like a refrigerator, glass for like a triple one to do that. And I think it's good. Why shouldn't the kingdom have the best? And this thing's going to cost $6,000. And I said, hey, it's there. We'll do everything we can to help you. If you plant the seed, the, the money is in the kingdom. So, just a little more details on that. I just thought I'd plant that seed this morning and let that resonate with people. That, that's the way to address it. The food to his mouth. Is that what the tornado is for? Yeah. Yeah, the fajita. Fajitas. Fajita fundraiser. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this probably ain't no Applebee's fajita either. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably for real. <laughs> All right. Women, women Connect this Tuesday. Women Connect this Tuesday in the basement or on the <laughs> on the WW 530. 530. All right. Everybody's good. Whatever. Golf tournament. I don't know. We was just talking about that. I don't know how I can forget it. That's this coming Friday. All right. So if you ain't nailed down, you better be getting nailed down. We got a couple teams at least. So we need golfers and givers. We need golfers and givers. All right. Richard's thinking about winning that car. Hole in one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Big benefit for care and counseling. So we're glad to have, uh, you know, counseling coming. At least it's, you know, just there in Marion, but it's growing and getting bigger and expanding. And to have counseling that's, uh, gosh, I don't know how, how I can say this without getting in too much trouble. There's like counseling. And then there's like kind of Christian counseling, which is just religious. And then there's Chris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, <laughs> religious counseling to me is worse than secular counseling because most of the reasons that people need counseling for religion calls. <laughs> so to go put more religion on them well, well <coughs> duh I'm not educated but I know better than that so you know it's awesome grace based uh, telling people the truth about who they are and all that so that's an awesome needed in every single community everywhere so good stuff it's is the world can't fix what the world wants that's exactly right exactly right and institutions can't fix what's caused by lack of love. Only other humans can do that. So, hmm. all right. Anything else? Everybody good? We're all here. We might as well get it on, haven't we? Yeah. All right. You appreciate this bunch right here? Yeah. Well, here's our prayer. We want to know God more. I think about it all the time that I believe so much junk about who he is and what he's really like that I'm just going to spend the rest of my life discovering who God is. I want to know more than I did yesterday. And just, man, is it is it fun or what? To discover and live life as a son of God and understand that you don't have to be religious and fact things against religion to get... I better sit down. <laughs> we want to know God more? Yeah, yeah I do. I do. Good morning. Hey. I've been trying to come up with a different song to sing and just uh, spoke to me, so I'm going to practice on y'all a little bit this morning. But, uh, you know, the deal we got is not a life without challenges or problems or difficulties. You know, Apostle Paul said, this is like short, still the trouble. Um, the deal is on how we approach them and how we react and how we respond to them. That's the deal we have. We got a helper. We have got a counselor. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6 foretold Jesus is coming and called him a counselor. And we have a healer. Uh, 
several years ago now, Natalie was in law school. Natalie's my daughter, you didn't know that. She uh, come in my office one day, and she was just beside herself because a friend of hers from law school had lost his life. And my daughter sat across the desk from me, weeping uncontrollably, and I'm trying to figure out what do I do here, how do I do it? And when she settled down a little bit, I said, Natalie, I wish I could tell you that your life is going to be without troubles, without heartaches, but I can't because mine has been filled up with them. But I can tell you that I hope I'm helping to prepare you to respond to them and react to them and get perspective on it. You know, and that's kind of what this song speaks to you today. It's an old crack family song. And I think about our church group here, our family that we kind of got so close with over the last several years. And I think I miss Jerry Walker, you know? I think about Mike a lot, what he's been through the last couple of years. You don't just go through things like that without a fight. It's tough. So anyway, I want to sing this song. Maybe it'll be a blessing to you guys. He's always there for us. So, so many times a question, certain circumstances, things I cannot understand. Frustration gets so out of hand. Victories without fighting, and he said, Hell, 
everybody happy? Yes. Is everybody happy? Is everybody happy? This is an old, uh, little, like, uh, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. So everyone knows that, right? Pretty much. I've got that joy, 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 joy down.
signed up and volunteered for all that but but after I've been through and I'm on the other side now the opportunity that I get to know God to a level that I wouldn't have known had I not gone through that would it be worth it? Absolutely I've said every time absolutely I'd go through you know am I looking for uh, problems? No obviously not who is? And a lot of people will say we preach this grace to such a radical level that they think that we believe in victory so much so that well are you saying that you never you just never going to have a bad day now you know I say nobody's ever said that the fact is you don't get good at fighting without fighting you can't have victory without fight to fight so but you know even old grouchy James he said <laughs> count it all joy when you when you come up and face this stuff because because you get a chance to fight and and only do you get good at fighting and if you, if you practice fighting. So, I mean, my goodness, we get to face something. It's an opportunity now for us to get good at, at fighting. So, everybody's good? Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody got something? I always say, especially it's lighter home crowd, you know, I say put some wild stuff out there all the time. So, anytime somebody's got, well, wait a minute, are you saying? Yeah, probably I am, but if you want to talk about it, we can. So, you always have that chance here. Don't just take everything I say hook, line, and sinker, all right? Everybody's good? Well, I'm, uh, I find myself, maybe just, in, not, not just myself, but, but everybody, all of us, really. But I find myself constantly thinking, you know, it's like undoing undoing this thing that we've all grown up in whether you've been in church or not you were born with this kind of a mindset of uh how would you just call it religious it's produced i mean we talk about chris gets to see it every day all day people that are coming for counseling and i'm not i'm not you know I, everybody should go to counseling everybody everybody should go to counseling or somewhere or another i don't know but I, i'm not you know I, I don't want to sound like it's a negative thing at all. It's not. It's an awesome thing. And, and so I would say really what the gospel should be is undoing that. It's like how many people come. I didn't prepare Chris for this, but no, no, I have to give you numbers, statistics or what. But how many people that come with, with issues that need dealt with that are in search of truth would not have the issues if they had not believed the lie? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. If if somebody actually believes this this whole religious thing is always telling you that you're not enough, that you need to do something more, that you need to be better at this, you need to quit doing that, and it's like, you know, the whole thing in the beginning when the when when the serpent showed up in the garden, right, and, and they got all this thing going, this paradise, and it's like Perfection. They walk with God, and it's the greatest thing ever. And here comes this uh, serpent, and he tries to deceive Eve. He does deceive Eve. He said, "Did did God say that you couldn't eat from all the trees? Or what? What about this tree of the knowledge? The tree of knowledge. It's knowledge of something, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He just doesn't want you to eat that because he knows when you eat that, that 
that you're going to be like God. Now, now she got tricked into that and she ate from the tree, right? How could she have eaten from the tree if she did not believe what it is that he said? He's a liar. He lied. And the truth would have been already, she, she could have said, the truth is, I'm already like God. But because she believed the lie, right? I mean, was Adam and Eve where we made the likeness and image of God? Yes. That means she's already like God. I mean, Matt's saying, I'm a child of God. He's my dad. Right? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a cow man. I go out there, we're calving right now. I go out there and, and you have, a, you have a, a black daddy bull and a, a black mama cow and a black baby calf. <laughs> or, you know, there's a red bird out here, a mama red bird and a daddy red bird. And a baby red bird. They're just like them, right? They're just like them. Well, if God's going to have kids, come on now. I saw in there in Revelation. I think it's in Revelation. He's the He's the Lord of. Uh, we were religious. We quote this or sing a song or something, not even knowing what it means. But He's the Lord of Lords. Is that how it goes? He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, right? He's the King of King of who? He's the Lord of Lords. Come on, he's the Lord of who? Who's the kings? Who's the Lords? Uh-oh. See, I'm telling, I'm so tired of this religious mess of we're just dogs and no good worm, and I'm just a no good rotten scoundrel. Oh, we're just sinners saved by grace. Bull hockey, you're not that. That's the lie. That's the trick that the enemy's given us over and over to say, you know, well, you know, you need to partake of this. You need to be doing something. You need to eat this in order for you to be more like God. Here's the truth. You're already like God. Oh, gosh, this is squirming, ain't it? Does anybody <laughs> squirm? Maybe not you got Somebody on there is squirming maybe a little here. If you believe this, let me let me show you. If you believe this, it's all we've been talking about lately, right? Proverbs 4, guard your heart above all else because out of it flow the issues of life. If you believe you're like God, and that's what's in your heart, you understand what's going to be produced in your life. See, what happens is we think that the sin, that what Eve, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we think the sin was eating the fruit. The sin was not eating the fruit. Eating the fruit represents the fruit that's produced when you believe the lie. You see what I'm saying? Did I get that? Everybody got, got it? E eating, you know, eating the fruit is not the sin. Eating the fruit is what's produced when you believe the lie. In fact, what we think sin is, I, we talked about this Thursday night, uh, we think sin is all these little verbs or all these behaviors or all these actions that, that we think are less desirable, you know, but really that's not accurate at all. That, that would be a verb, but really sin is a noun and it's the lie of believing, believing the lie. That's, oh, let me read you something here. This, let me, let me read this thing. Let me find it. I read it, I read it the other night too, but we're all right. Everybody's good. This is, a, this is the Mirror Bible. Have I heard of the Mirror Bible? It's a mirror translation, the Mirror Bible. So it's kind of a recent deal and it's really good and I love it. Uh, this guy's from South Africa, his name, I just like saying it. Francois Duquois. <laughs> <laughs> Francois Duquois, you can look up Francois Duquois. I mean, all the religious guys are calling him a heretic and all this, but you know, they call us that too, if you didn't know. Oh boy. It, anytime, anytime somebody believes something that doesn't fit in your traditional box, you're automatically a heretic. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. We're, we're heretics, I guess. But really, the ones that. Oh boy. Come on, Jay Stuff. Stay on. Really, the, the ones that. Like our early church fathers, the, the apostles, and the ones like immediately after the cross and all that that came along. What they would call a heretic 
would be the traditionalists and the one that are saying you have to keep doing these things in order to be something, right? That's what a heretic was. Now those, <laughs> they're the ones calling everybody else heretics that are saying, you know what? Fooey with the traditions, fooey with our religious boxes and all this stuff. It's all believing the lie. What about going back to the truth of we're, we're made in the likeness and image of God. Everybody with me? Yeah. So uh, you'll hear all kinds of stuff. I don't care. I, I, as you can tell, it backs me up. There's a whole, whole bunch of folks out there that, that have all kinds of stuff to say about us. But, you know, really it's because we're hungry to know God. And if that means we, we have to crush our boxes and our traditional thinking in order to get more of God, then so be it. Does that make us squirm sometimes? Sure. It's all right. Let's go for it. You want to? I, I heard a guy say this, and I love it. I'm, I'm stealing it. And But he said this. We, you know, we talk about the goodness of God and the grace of God all the time. That's all we talk about. And, and he said, I, this guy's he's, he's along our way of thinking. And he said, I doubt when I get to heaven that God's going to say, I sure appreciate all that you did. But don't you think you overestimated me just a little bit? <laughs> Probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Oh, anyway, let's look here. John 8. This, this is the mirror Bible. John 8, 11. This is, where, uh, this is where the woman caught an act of adultery. Remember the story? The Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. And they, they get this woman. She's caught in the very act of adultery. They bring her in there and they throw her down on the ground. And they think, see, they're, they're real, not really concerned about the woman. They're trying to trap Jesus. Because here Jesus is. He's Mr. Grace and love everybody. And they said, well, so here this woman is breaking the law. So we're going to trap him. He's either going to have to break the law and go against the law or change his tune on all this love and forgiveness business, right? So they bring her in her door down and said, this woman's caught in the very act. The law says she should be stoned. What do you say? Jesus, he bends down and writes on the ground. You know, everything over there is rock. So it's like he's bent over and he's with his finger writing on stone. Now, when was the first time that the finger of God wrote on stone? Ten Commandments, the law, right? So I don't know what he wrote. But probably had something to do with that because he, he got up second time, bends down, writes on stone again with his finger. And the next thing you know, the, all the religious dudes, oh, he said, you without sin, you cast the first stone. And that from the oldest to the youngest, they all put their heads down and, and shuffled on out of the deal and got out of there. And Jesus put them in their place, you know. And then he says to the woman, you know, uh, where are your accusers? Where'd your accusers go? That was his question for her. And she says, there's no one left to condemn you, to accuse you. And so here's her answer. Now this is the mirror Bible. She answered, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither am I condemning you. Neither am I condemning you. Go and sin no more. Never again believe a lie about yourself. Now here, here's his commentary on the deal. The word translated sin, I can't pronounce it really. H-A-M-A-R-T-I-A. Somebody want to try that? H-A-M-A-R-T-I-A. -A. So he breaks the word down. H-A, ha, is a certain word in the in the Greek and all that. Meros, all, you know, all that. Okay, let me just break it down for you. You can look this up. But here's what the word, the noun, sin, here's what the word actually is. That H word, H-A, whatever. It's to believe the lie about yourself. It's not a verb. It's not an action. It's not behaviors. It's this. Never again go, this is what he said to her, never again go live by believing the lie about who you really are. Because now I'm not condemning you. Now he's pouring out grace and only when he pours, see the law does not reveal who God's heart really is. The law does not reveal who you really are. So he run the law guys off and then he said this, I'm extending grace and forgiveness and love and mercy to you so that you can see who God really is. Now in that revelation, 
Go no, go now and never again believe the lie about who you really are because now you've experienced who God really is. You can start to experience who you really are and you'll you'll have a whole different life. Than, you see what I'm saying? It's believing the lie about yourself. This is what religion does. This is what the law does. It exposes you as a failure. And if you believe you're a failure, if you believe you're not cutting it, if you believe you're just a sinner, that's what you'll have in your heart. And that's what your heart will be producing. And that's the fruit that you'll be eating. Eating fruit from the wrong tree. You got me? You got me? So I'm saying, sin is not all these actions. All these actions are just fruit of believing the lie about yourself. When you believe the lie that you're not enough the way you are, you'll go looking for all kinds of things to figure out how to fill this void or how can I get peace because all this has driven me crazy of I'm not enough, 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 I'm not good enough, I haven't done this enough. Come on, you can get religious about it and you say, well, I've been in church my whole life, I'm a Christian. Well, good for you. In a lot of places, that means you're a good Christian. It means you go to church regular and you quit cussing, drinking, and chewing. <laughs> or smoking. You know, where I grew up, if you went to church regular, you didn't cuss, drink, or smoke, then you're a pretty good Christian. <laughs> I'm telling you right, am I not? Huh? And you all getting nervous on me now or what? And saying, what's that got to do with anything? Because you can get religious now and say, well, I'm not enough because I don't do those things. Or I'm not enough and I can't go to church because I do do those things. You can be going to church and not be doing those things and still be sitting there saying, I don't do this enough or that because you can get religious with the thing. You can still have the same mindset and say, well, okay, I'm doing pretty good now. But am I praying enough? Am I reading my Bible enough? Come on, where's it in? It's all the same tree. It's all to say, what if I really, you know, got out of that tree and just said, I'm going to eat from the tree of life to say, you know what, you're enough. Hey, this is the love of God right here that if you never quit doing any of these things, if you never, whatever you got going on, if you never read your Bible again, if you never pray again, if you never quote a scripture again, you are no less loved you are no less a child of God. You are free as you can be and you can believe the truth about yourself saying, I'm, I'm not who I am because I've read my Bible. I am not who I am because I've gone to church. I am not who I am because I've quit whatever. I am who I am because he has said so. And he said, if you live in that place, you'll have the truth and the truth will make you free. You don't have to believe all these lies about yourself anymore. Come on, if there was one announcement of the gospel, if I could put it in one, one phrase, I would say it's this. God announcing to humanity, you no longer have to believe the lie. You are enough, just like you are. Come on, it's the lie of the enemy. What, what happened to Jesus? So as soon as Jesus gets baptized, right, he shows up on the scene. John the Baptist, John, you know, Jesus gets baptized, the sky opens up, right? The dove descends on him, and the Father says. I mean, this is like his inaugural day, right? He's going public. Father, you know, imagine, the Father could make any announcement he wanted to. Here it is. Here's my boy. What does he think? The most important thing for him to hear right now is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God was pleased. Now look, as far as, as far as the scriptures, he hadn't cast out one devil. He hadn't opened the eyes of the blind. He hadn't raised the dead. He hadn't fed the hungry. He hadn't done any of these things. He hadn't earned his spot as being a son of God. It had nothing to do with it. This is the son that I love, and I'm tickled pink. <laughs> Now, now watch, as soon, as soon as he's up out of the water, the Spirit leads him out into the wilderness and he's tempted of the devil for 40 days, right? Is that how it goes? And so the enemy shows up and here's what he says. You say you're the son of God, right? First thing he does, he leaves off to be loved because if he, can, if he can get you to forget that you're the loved, the beloved, 
something, then he can get you. If, he, if you forget that you're the beloved son, he said, you, you say you're the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Come on, now I think. Now, now turning stones into bread is not some evil, vile, immoral act. Oh, I can't. Can't you? Did you? Did you hear about so-and-so? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. They turned stones to bread. <laughs> right? It's not a bad deal. I would think it'd be good. What's he trying to do? He, he's, not, he's trying to get Jesus to sin. Would we, would in our calculations, in our old religious way of thinking of what we think sin is, would turning stones into bread fall under the definition of what we think sin is? No. So what's the sin? He's trying to say, Jesus, you say you're the son of God. Prove it by doing a good deed. Prove it by doing something. Jesus says, I don't have to turn stone. I'm paraphrasing Jason's version. I don't have to turn stones into bread. I don't have to do a good deed. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to lift a finger to be the son of God. I'm the son of God because the father himself just opened up the sky and declared it himself. I'm the son of God because it's who he says I am. He has declared it. He has established it. And that's the only truth that I have to rely on. And that revelation empowered him to now go win the battles and raise the dead and give sight to the blind. He, he did all that empowered by believing the truth of who he is because of who the Father says he is. <laughs> Come on, I know religious people get nervous and you can't just tell people their sin's gone. Well, why not? Because your shame ain't working. I'm telling you, believing the truth about who you are, you're a son of God and and you're, you're just perfect the way you are will empower you to live the life that we all have been trying by willpower and somehow muster up the... You see what I'm saying? You believe you're no good, rotten, not enough? Fruit's going to be produced of that. You believe that you've been given the gift of righteousness? It's a, it's a free gift. I've been made the son of God. He said I'm enough. If I never do any of these things, if I never turn... Stones to bread. If I never turn stones to bread, I'm still the son of God. If I never read my Bible again, I'm still the son of God. And he loves me and he's pleased with me. If I never even pray again, or if I never any of this stuff again, are you saying? That's what I'm saying. You're perfectly loved. You're perfectly loved just like you are. The way you said, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, if I could preach this all over Southern Illinois, I'd put Chris out of business. <laughs> <laughs> She'd have to find something else to do. I, I don't know. I guess as long as there's law churches still operating, she's gonna have enough to do. <sighs> so, what you're saying is Satan started religion? Satan started religion. He's backing religion. Yeah. It absolutely is. And religion is man's way of thinking of what I have to do to get back to God, to be pleasing to God. And there's 47 million versions of it. And where Jesus said, every tree that the Father gave the plant will be pulled up by the roots, I went back and looked in Genesis 2, and it never says that God planted the Christian on the tree. Because it's there, it never says he planted it. So we've made that assumption all Trick of the enemy. Get you focused on you and what you do. What, what if we just actually believe? I'm a beloved son of God in whom he is well pleased. And it had nothing to do with, with anything that I did or didn't do. <laughs> what? You mean, you mean God's pleased with me? In my mess? You mean I don't have to clean my life up first? No. This is how you know this is the gospel of the new covenant because it provides rest. If you're working, 
Old Covenant. Uh, let, me make it, let, me, let me make it even more drastic. If you're trying, Old Covenant. If you're resting, it's all on him and his doing. All on his accomplishment, all on him, everything he's done, who he is. Now listen, I know, I know, I know, I can hear it. You say we don't have to do nothing. Look, you will produce more fruit <laughs> by not trying. You will produce more fruit in the posture of resting than you ever did when you were trying and when you were working. Are you saying God, he loves me to the maximum amount if I never read my Bible again? That's what I'm saying. Now watch. I, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I tried both systems, all right? I'm, I'm living proof. They said, you ought to read your Bible more. Now how do we interpret that? I'm not reading it enough now. How do I interpret that? I'm not enough. I'm not doing enough. I got to do more. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm coming up short. You see what I'm saying? You see that? You see that thing? But now that I say, you know what? I, I, I'm perfectly loved if I never read my Bible again. If I never even open that thing, I'm perfectly loved. Now when I get a glimpse of that kind of God and that kind of love, watch what happens now. I actually read my Bible more than I did when I was trying. I can't get enough of it now. I mean, I'm com it's like I'm on this thing now. I'm, it's my life's goal now. I don't, I don't know what all this is or how this, any of this even happened. All I know is that I woke up one day and realized that I believed a lie about God. And, and I don't, I don't, you know, if, if one thing I've learned is, is a lie, then maybe a bunch of it is. I don't know. So I, I want to know who the truth is. I want to know the truth. I want to know who God is and what God's really like because I believe a whole lot of stuff that's not right. So now I say I get to spend the rest of my life with this, with this prayer. I want to know you. I want to know who you really are. And if it makes me squirm, so be it. If, it, if you're going to break down all my boxes of traditions and all my small thinking and make me squirm and, and make me get talked bad about by all the religious Pharisees, so be it. I'll throw it all away. I just want to know who God is and what God's really like. In that place, all of the stuff that they say should be happening. Watch, this is the place Jesus lived. He didn't bite. He didn't, he didn't bite from that deal. And because he didn't bite, he lived. The life that he lived because he did not believe the lie. You and me have the same opportunity now. Don't tell me it's just going to you're giving people license to sin. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, holy cow, it breaks it down to this. The, the whole church wants to make everything about right and wrong. This is right, this is wrong. They're all arguing. You know, like just in Western Christianity, there's like 30 some thousand denominations. Maybe more than that now. 30,000 denominations. You know why there's a denomination? You know why a new denomination comes along? Because we don't agree with it. All of it's built on disagreements. <laughs> Come on, all of our stuff now is built what we would call Protestants. Right? You know what Protestant means? Protesters. <laughs> Come on, that's what it means. We're protesting. We're not with them anymore. <laughs> Give me a break. We're so off track. Why, why, why is that so hard to admit and to see and say, you know what, let's forget all this mess. Let's get back on track. Quit eating from the wrong tree. Just believe God says, you know, that he accomplished all that he accomplished on the cross. It's, it breaks it down to this simple. It's not even about sin. You can believe the truth and fruit's produced. You can believe the lie and the lie's produced. 
I, I don't know how to make it any simpler. You come up with as much programs and, and laws and rules and denominations that you want to discuss and argue about all the fruit that's produced out of believing the lie. Here's a, here's a, here's a genius idea. You ready for this? You guys are really going to think I'm genius. If we forget, if we forget believing the lie, all the fruit goes away. You can throw all your programs, all your denominations, all your nonsense away and get over here and eat from the right tree, the tree of life, the tree of truth, and believe who we are because he says who we are and all the nonsense goes away. We just get up in a big old pile and sing songs and celebrate who God is and all that he's doing and, and look at my fruit basket. I got this big old basket full of fruit that come from the tree of life and guess what? I didn't grow any of this fruit. Jesus... He grew all this fruit and he put it in my basket. Amen. You need some fruit? <laughs> you with me? Or it's like when we're religious, we got this fruit over here. I need, I need a sheet or something because we're going to go to church. I need to cover my fruit a little while. So I still got a basket of rotten fruit, Mr. Deacon. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Yeah. Amen. I'm just telling you, you're enough, just like you are. And let's accept this mindset that I have. I am who I am because of all He is and who He says He is, and all that He accomplished on my behalf because of His perfect love for me. And He loves me perfectly, and I've been put in this position all because of who He is. And, I, and I'm eligible for all that the Father has. I have life with God. Everything heaven has to offer is mine right now. Whether I ever lift a finger. Gosh, our, our, our religious heads are having a hard time with that, don't we? Did anybody squirm? Don't answer. Just be honest within your own self. Did I squirm at least just a little bit still when he said I don't have to lift a finger? <laughs> oh boy, you guys better come sing something to get me out of this. <laughs> Is anybody mad about it? I'm just telling you, this will set you free. This will produce all the fruit that you were trying to produce before by your religious effort. It absolutely is effortless. Believe the truth about who you are. You're enough. You're not a failure. You're not a sin. Not all these things. We've experienced all this stuff because we've all believed the lie. We've all had a basket of not so good. There's so many different versions of whatever not so good looks like. We've all tried everything of whatever. You, you know, man, he's still out there inventing stuff. <laughs> right? We've all, we've all ate from that tree. We've all tried that. We've all had, for whatever reasons, we've all had a basket of fruit that is not so good and you don't even want everybody to know all about it. So, We've all got it. We've all had it. It's all because of one reason we've all believed the lie. When the lie's gone, all of it's gone. We don't have to have a 10-week series on, on sins. How to overcome sins. All this sin, sin, sin. Religious, religious, religious. You know, we don't ever even talk about any of that stuff. Who cares? Just start believing the truth. truth is, you're alright, just like you are. And God's just head over heels over you. And here's the gospel. Everything that you thought was separating you really isn't there. So you can snuggle up right next to him and he can do whatever he wants with you. It's none of my business. It's none of my business what he wants to do with you or how long it takes for him to do it. They say, all right. Is everybody all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is good news, isn't it? This is equal playing field, equal. It's that absolutely there for anybody, everybody. I don't, you don't have to be a genius to even figure this out. 
God loves you perfectly just like you are. No, no. So simple a child to get it. So simple a child to get it. Man, I don't know. We can agree with this mentally even. I want it to get deeper in us than that. That's why I continue to talk about it all the time. I don't want it to just be a mental consent. That's a step maybe. But I want this thing to get in us to our core to where that this is actually who we believe we are. I'm the love son of God and he is what he is. Not because of anything that I've done. Not because of anything I haven't done. You got it? I if I got it? Yeah. Say I got it. I got it. Say I'm beloved. I'm beloved. Just like I am. Just like I am. Alright, watch out. Good fruit in the right tree. All right? Everybody's good? If you need help with it, you can get it. Everybody do this. I can rest. If you let your heart and your head rest, you won't have to go see Chris no more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody's good? Yeah. I love you all. Here we go. There's even more out of us than a fight for. We're going to fight for the fight when that war is love.
so fast. Yeah. Yeah, great job. That was amazing. It was like, I told him, I said, I felt like this is like the place in years. I felt like this place was packed. And then I turned around and I'm like, hey, there's not even hardly even here. You know, but it felt like that. We had the Yes, please. Yes. I love it. That'll make all the difference. It does help. 